Hey everybody, and welcome to the D&D Podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Paladin class. Now, I have played as the Paladin on three separate occasions, although it was a... It was kind of complicated because it technically was the same character, but slightly altered each time. It, it was very complicated, but I've technically played as three different paladins, although they were kind of the same person. And I do have a little bit of experience with playing alongside of in my very first campaign, which lasted about a year, the Tomb of Annihilation. I was playing alongside of the Paladin, and our characters were fairly close. And I've, I have, how do I phrase this? I, I really like this class. Is a lot of people when they think of D and D, they genuinely, they genuinely think of something similar to the Paladin, if not the Wizard. Some someone that can fight really well while still casting semi-powerful magic. So the Paladin, what they are, they're basically the warriors for a specific deity. Uh, it can be any of your choice. You can be a Paladin of, I'm sure you could be a Paladin of Asmodeus if you wanted to, who is equivalent to the devil of D&D, or you could be a Paladin of Torm if you wanted. <laughs> and you get a lot of very cool abilities. You get Divine Sense and Lay on Hands at the very first level. Uh, divine sense is basically you can feel the presence of strong evils or really powerful good nearby and then lay on hands you just lay your hand on someone and you heal them a lot it's not exactly a powerful healing spell because it only does your paladin level multiplied by five so like at level one you're only healing five hit points but then again, at level 1, most people usually have between 1 and 12 hit points anyway, depending on the class. So I guess it can be pretty powerful healing magic. Then you get spell casting. Paladins have... They're a little bit more limited in their spells, but they still have a wide variety of things they can choose. But then you get to your Sacred Oath. Which is weird that the oath comes at level 3 instead of level 1 when you actually become a paladin, but that's a box of worms for another day. <laughs> now, a sacred oath is you, it, it's your subclass. You can be Oath of Vengeance, Oath of the Ancients, an Oath Breaker. There's several different types. And it's all basically what do you want your paladin to be, or what kind of deity are you working for? Or did you break your oath and now you're gone rogue as an oath breaker? I usually choose Oath of the Ancients because that fit well with the character. Only because uh, Oath Breaker, it the way Oath Breaker is, it always uh, for some context, my my player, not my player, my character. Uh, he was in a, he was raised by a village that worshipped like a demon. He realized that this was not for him, and he wanted to worship a good deity. Although he already taken, or though he already had taken oath to a demon, so he would be an oath breaker. But the way that oath breaker is written, it's as if you have to be worshiping a good deity, and then you broke the oath, or you just went to something evil. So I ended up having to throw away that concept and use Oath of the Ancients instead. But overall, your subclasses, they give you some pretty cool things like Divine Intervention. I love the Divine Intervention, especially later on. It's later on, if you roll die and you get at or below your Paladin level, then just Divine Intervention works. Basically, the deity you worship, they basically show up and say, Hey dude, what can I do for you? How can I help? You called me. It's kind of cool, hilarious, and can be very overpowered at the same time. Now, another thing that they get, which is pretty cool, is smite. Divine smite. It is 
very awesome. You add damage to your melee attacks, which is why I personally prefer the Paladin over the Fire Glass. And like the higher, basically how it works, you sacrifice one of your spell slots, so you can no longer, well, you can still cast spells for the day, but basically instead of casting a spell, you channel your magical energy into your weapon. You channel this divine energy, and it does a lot more damage, depending on, well, I, I guess depending on what you roll. Because at first you get, if you use a first level spell slot, you get 2d8 extra damage, which is a lot. And then as you go up, it's 1d8 for each spell that's higher. And if you use a, it can go up to a maximum of 5d8, I believe, extra damage, which is incredible, especially since most weapons only do 1d8 damage in the first place. So you're basically multiplying what you could do by 5 already. And that is just incredible, especially with your if you're using extra attack and then you smite both times. You can be doing massive amounts of damage, especially if you're at level 19 and 20, where you have two 5th level spell slots. You can just go ham on demons. Oh yeah, another thing, your smite, it does radiant damage, so against things like the undead, it doubles that damage. In my in the one shot where I introduced my power gun, uh, it was it was it was a high level one shot. So we started at like level fourteen, and <laughs> I had a fourth level spell slot at level fourteen. So when we got to the final boss, I had we had recently taken a long rest, and we go up to him. I smite my web. I think I had a spear at the time. I smite my spear, and I stab him. I use my extra attack, smite, and then stab with a level 3 spell slot, which is just slightly lower. And both hit. One was a crit, and since they were radiant, with the minus the original damage of the spear, it was all doubled. And then one was doubled again, because it was a critical hit. I almost one-shot this final boss that was supposed to be unkillable, and I loved it. <laughs> like, the DM had even, the, the entire point of this final boss, we were supposed to have to use our minds. We were have to use the environment. There was even a trap set up that we could get him into. Turns out we didn't even need it, because I just go up and stab him twice and nearly kill him. It was really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. You also get these auras as a paladin. I believe one of them, uh, when people are within 10 feet of you, they cannot be afraid. That's the aura of courage. I know you also get the aura of protection, though I can't exactly think of what it does off the top of my head. Maybe... I, I think it increases the chance of a saving throw but I'm, I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head so don't quote me on that and then later on you know your aura gets improved it goes from 10 feet to 30 feet and it's pretty cool but a lot of stuff you get is from your oath well technically all of your magic comes from your oath and it is a very cool class it's pretty good when you first start out. It's pretty good throughout. I think it scales very well. They're, I mean, around levels uh, like 13, 14, it might feel like you're not getting much to level up, but then later on you feel like you're getting stuff again because you get fifth level spells, you get your oath feature, you get the aura improvement, you get the ability score. And I think it's a really good class overall. I highly recommend it. I I don't think I would say, well, I mean, depending on what I'm doing or how racing it would be, it may be in my top couple classes. Currently it's not because I'm doing some stuff with some other classes and I'm just really falling in love with them, but it is a very solid class. I highly recommend it. 
uh, to any, I, I wouldn't recommend it to a beginner. I, I wouldn't recommend anything with spells to a first timer. But, I mean, unless you just really want to go all in at the same, all at once. But when you're a little more advanced at the game, I highly recommend this class. That's about all I have to say about the Paladin. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Give me a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything else I could be doing on this channel. And until next time, roll well.